Хорошо. Значит, сегодня мы продолжим доказывать эквивалентность топологической рекурсии линейных и квадратичных и прожекшен проперти. Значит, а, а онлайн слушатели все равно у нас. А, у меня теперь есть старая камера. Нет, что, они видят? А, видят? Да. Нет. Что они Нет, они не видят только доступ. Значит, в прошлый раз мы доказали, значит, у нас есть долг с прошлого раза, который останется. О, да, сожалею. Окей, мы 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 Topological recursion model this statement that the projection property is equivalent to the statement that omega gens uh, have only poles in zero to the uh, and the projection property itself we formulate in this some, some formula using regions. And so I think this fact we also will not prove today, but we'll see. So today, the, the goal for today, uh, lecture, to prove from topological recursion relation, so from topological recursion, uh, okay. Uh, But if we have topological recursion relation, then uh, linear equation, quadratic equation, and uh, projection property. Oh. All this equation fold. Uh, so we said last time that it is like more or less the, the backward uh, process uh, of what we did uh, last, last week. But okay, it's not it's not like uh, analogous computation. So let let me let me describe. Let me prove it. Uh, so first, maybe let me rewrite the political recursion relation just to have it on the board. I'm not sure that I'm able to write it here fast, but uh, Paulina, Rafael, do you hear me well or yeah, yes. Yes. yes? Okay, so we have this formula. Uh, here we have uh, in formula itself we have uh, integral uh, of this form, yes, and uh, over, uh, let me write delta <coughs> delta w w delta w of omega zero one mm -hmm. uh, of double maybe with minus. But yeah, you need to recall what is delta yeah, 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 yeah. the same. Yeah. Uh, yes, I should recall. Um, okay, let me let me finish and then I recall what is delta. Um, and here, omega minus one plus two, w sigma i of w ten uh, plus some prime ta 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 omega g one w plus one w Times omega g two omega g j two plus one sigma i w z g 
And the soul uh, uh, say okay delta of lambda is equal to lambda of z plus lambda of oh sorry minus uh, minus lambda of sigma of z and here where well, this index uh, means that uh, it, it in invariable double yes so it's omega omega zero one of sigma of, of w minus omega zero one it should be delta i so that uses sigma i yes delta i delta i oops delta i w of yes and also we can rewrite the this um, numerator in terms of the uh, in the notations of the previous lecture uh, this this guy in fact is equal to I don't have to sign but uh, delta w i of I want to write g i w z zero So delta is this delta, and G, also from the previous lecture, uh, G i of W z zero is equal to uh, integral over the, from z zero to W. Yeah, omega omega zero. So this is maybe okay. I hope that all here all is correct with the signs. I mean, um, yes, I mean here. But it doesn't matter because today we will discuss only uh, some homomorphicity of this stuff and some. Uh, Statement like is it equal to zero at the i, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So the sign doesn't. No, it, it will matter in the sense that uh, it should agree with the sign in the b one omega because we will take the. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Uh, ah, yes. Okay. So maybe let's let them. So let me check. So it's. Uh, uh, Integral from W to sigma i. Then the sigma i. So and in the denominator we have minus delta, and delta is yes. Uh, so I think uh, so uh, delta. Okay, delta. Maybe maybe without the minus. I think it should be correct if you delta remove the minus. W i g i delta is zero. Uh, it will be W, so it, this guy minus from. I think you don't need the minus so, in the denominator. So Z0 W minus integral Z0 sigma i of W. Yes? And then, so from W, uh, we will have minus. Ah, okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, you don't need the minus yeah, in the denominator. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it is equal to minus integral from w to sigma i to w, yes? So we should revert. Yeah. So I should, yeah. Here we are. Oh, you should probably just erase it. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So we have here this guy. And uh, also we had this S, S of lambda z is equal to test lambda z plus lambda z. And uh, so what we want to prove, I uh, want to prove linear quadratic and projection property um, stuff. And what is what does it mean linear? What what means what does it mean linear loop equation? It means that the S of uh, omega GM is equal to is holomorphic near PIs and equal to zero at least has at least uh, zero at least order one. And uh, yes, uh, but we know that uh, so, uh, and we want to prove it in each variable independent. Yeah. So in fact, we want to prove that. So we know we know this uh, relation, and we want to prove. Say, first, so we know uh, topological regression relation. We want to prove. Want uh, to prove that S uh, omega G N S Z S Z Z zero omega G N plus one. Z zero Z n uh, holomorph uh, plus uh, has uh, zero of least one and p i for each i. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me let us look on the right hand side, at the right hand side of this relation, topological regression relation, and we see that we don't see because I don't know. <laughs> because this is a draw. But uh, these these brackets uh, do not have uh, z zero, so z zero only here. So z zero we have only here. And uh, let me write, j just write what, what we have. Just write down what we have here after applying S Z0 to, to this prefactor. Uh, yes, so moreover, let me just at, at first write S S Z zero of of this G oh, we had we have here this G I of W Z naught so S zero S uh, S S zero of G W uh, W Z naught Z zero uh, Z zero so. Uh, Maybe first write the explicit formula for G because we will need it later as well. Uh, yes. Which we yes. had uh, last week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let let let's write. So what was for delta G? For for delta. Because here we will also have. Ah, it's delta G. Sorry. Yes. Delta W. Uh, delta G. G i delta w s z zero yes and uh, yes I I'm writing in blue what we had last week yes so we also had uh, delta w of G 
I W zero. So let me maybe too many too many formulas. I mean the idea the, the idea now is follows that linear loop equation more or less uh, will follow now. We just write down this this uh, uh, formula for this expression, and we will see that it's holomorphic and it's okay. Just just direct computation, the easy direct computation of, of this guy, and and we are we are done. We will be we will prove the linear equation, and for. Uh, for projection property, we also okay. Then we prove the projection property, but we use the fact that projection property it is the uh, statement about it is the property of omega gs that they have only poles in PIs. And then we we will prove uh, quadratic loop equation more or less uh, again in terms of the ideas from previous lecture. And now you see we also use a lot the, the ideas, not the ideas, but the notation from the resolution, but I don't know. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, um, so, who is this delta? It's from last time. It is uh, omega W minus Z0 D Z0 over W. No. Uh, something wrong. W minus P should be yes in numerator. Uh, oh no. W minus sigma I of W. Ah, W minus sigma I of W. Yes. Uh, w minus Z0 and W minus uh, PI minus Z0. It means sigma I of W minus Z0. Okay. So you, you don't have Yeah, P. I don't have P. Okay, and then this we have needed last, last yeah. time, right? And then this is equal to uh, we uh, state that this is equal to uh, two W plus sigma i of W over uh, Z zero. Over so sigma i of w minus zero w minus zero and ah okay so it's a uh, this is assuming that the zero is uh, local coordinate so let me write just uh, sigma i of w squared z zero squared W squared minus the zero squared. Uh, and then it should be uh, as uh, the zero j, uh, as j is at zero, delta i w. Or, so, 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 again. I mean, it's, uh, it's a different, so here at, at, at ah, this yeah, yeah, happens yeah. at here, point i. Delta i. And here j. Yeah, but we but we assume that a sigma j of z zero yeah. is equal to minus z zero. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so we use here sigma j of z zero is equal to minus z zero. Uh, so this delta in i in w variable in i in evolution with number i, with the number i, and this s is near z zero and in evolution with the number j, and uh, we we are saying that we take I take the z zero as a local coordinate near j near j, 
p capital j near j zero of the x such that sigma j of zero is just for simplicity assume that the zero yeah. is a local coordinate near the j yeah. point such that such that the x is x of z is equal to uh, z squared uh, and okay, and you see, so we look at this guy. Now we take, uh, we, we should take uh, a residue uh, at as w tends to uh, pi. Oh, we, we, we can just say that. Uh, what happens uh, when we we are interested in the behavior of this guy? We need to say that it, it's holomorphic in Z zero at at pi. But yeah. know that here you have Z zero as the, the factors, and we assume that pi uh, Z zero oh, no, no, was no, as, no, equal to zero at pi. Not pi, pj. At pj, sorry. Yes, sorry. there it should be j. Yeah. Here should be. Yeah, with pj, and uh, and that zero is equal to, to we we assume so, that yeah we can can choose that zero as a local coordinate and in, in, in pj such that that zero just zero in pj, and so therefore this is just zero in pj. Uh, this s is that not j? It's a, it's a, and therefore yes, therefore all this right hand side just equal to zero at pj and therefore it's <laughs> it, it has a zero at last one and therefore so we we now say that we prove that it has a zero at last one and therefore it is holomorphic near uh, near pj is it clear is it Somehow clear. Or? What's the problem? Yeah, what's the problem? Uh, okay. Sorry, Sorry. Yeah. 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 Значит, почему мы так можем сделать? Потому что э, нам вроде никто не может заставить. Ну, если мы можем локально взять... Там еще какая-то константа может вылезти, но она при взятии S, она случится. Да, то есть... Там дальше ток в Z0 нет, да? Да, тут дальше ток в Z0 нет. А здесь там в Z0 нет. Единственная зависимость от Z0, она вот в, этот, в этом же сидит. И поскольку, значит, у нас получилось, что э, в точке пожитая S, S житая, да, вот здесь тоже житая, как бы писать. S житая, да. S житая от дельта G обращается в ноль, значит, и вся штука обращается в ноль, потому что никто любой зависит от этого нет. Да, последовательно, вы вот еще раз логика такая, что мы взяли вот эту, вот, вот эту формулу. И сказали, что значит, можно считать, что we can assume that z0 is equal to 0 at j and therefore Z zero J delta W I G I W Z zero is equal to zero and therefore right hand side of uh, this star equation not of star but of S star. So if you apply S J to star, yes. <laughs> ah. no, it's okay. You can just write star and then uh, apply okay. S star. Okay, it's fine. 
therefore right hand side of of S J star of S G is zero star uh, just equal to zero. Therefore, uh, left hand side. Uh, of S zero G star is equal to zero. Therefore, uh, okay, questions, no process. Put no channel was pulled. Но ничем особо не воспользовались, внимательно смотрели на вот эту формулу и как-то ее хитро переписывали. Да. И таким образом получилось линейное петлевое уравнение. Теперь, теперь projection property. Свойство проекции, значит, упс. Are there any further questions regarding the linear loop equation? Хорошо. Значит, теперь давай, окей. So let me again, uh, let me say that the projection property is equivalent to the fact that uh, omega gn has poles only in the eyes. Oops. Uh, and then I want to again look at the right hand side of this star formula of topological recursion relation and see somehow that it has not so it has poles on the yeah. So for stable cases. Yeah, for stable cases, yeah. For stable cases. So we do not need in projection property we exclude uh, omega zero one and omega zero two for higher omegas. Uh, they have only holes at uh, p eyes. Okay. Uh, I want to say that it is it follows just by induction from this form. So we uh, we want I want to say that okay. If we assume that the omega with smaller j and n has holes only in the eyes, then omega g n plus one also has a poles only in the eyes. So what what problem can uh, occur here? What so what difficulties? Uh, let's say, so what do you think, what, what difficulties will be, may, may appear here? То есть я могу сказать, что вот у омега всех с маленькими gn нет полюсов, то есть полюса только в pi, почему значит, что большого омега тоже полюса только в pi? Какая может быть проблема? Понятно, что происходит? Ну, то есть вроде как я могу сказать, вот, значит, э, тут, тут все хорошо в скобочках. То есть, окей, okay. uh, so. I can maybe I can say like this. So here in these brackets, 
all is okay. Only falls in, in the denominator we have only. Uh, and in the practice, we, we need to separately consider the only the zero two hits. Ah, when да, когда мы говорим полюс, мы имеем в виду, что у нас есть неравнодушная функция. Но наш куча переменных, и полюс получается там не такой. Мы рассматриваем только от зерна. Да, то есть, то есть у нас же все остальные зерны рассматриваем, чем только зависит от зерна. Видите, эти полюсы зависят от зерна. Понятно? Ну, у нас же такие, это такие функции, они, да, от многих переменных зависят, но каждая переменная независимо живет на своей cp1 да? и мы рассматриваем отдельно каждый раз говорим про них отдельно как про функцию от одной переменной на все остальные нет но ну, например не стабильные да возьмем они да. 0 2 да там у нас знаменатель там z1 минус z2 да Омега-2 это отдельный случай, кроме случая омега-2. Вот омега-2... Да, омега-2, он имеет действительно... То есть утверждаете, что везде знаменатели будут видны там Z1 минус там? P. А 1 там? Да, да, да. Z2 минус. Да, да, да. Да, то есть вот когда мы говорим про полюс, что полюс... Кроме случая омега-2. Омега-2 действительно есть. Да. И омега-1 тоже там может быть что-то... Ну, действительно, поэтому, поэтому действительно, uh, so you are right that here we have some omega zero two. Ah, even, okay, so it's, uh, if we are uh, talking about uh, using the, uh, the fact that uh, it's symmetric, we can only just uh, look at what at the zero. At the dependence on the zero, yes, yes, yes. and then uh, this, all those guys they do not even depend ah, on the zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the yes. dependence only comes through here, uh, through again this uh, numerator. And for the numerator, we have the formula. Where was it? This one. Delta G was this one. And as you can see, uh, the poles can only come from in the zero. And only come from here and here, from uh, the denominator in the formula for delta G, right? Uh, and once you take the residue W and sigma W, they always become P, uh, PI, right? So the only poles can be in PI. Yeah, so yeah. 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 Yes, uh, this is a uh, separate fact. Yes, yes, this is separate. So the second separate fact, the first separate fact that uh, that we we are using intensively is this one, uh, and the second, yes, that from so when last time when we when we were proven from uh, loop equations to topological recursion, we add this fact to the definitions. Say our set of one gens. And now, when we are proven from TR side to loop equations, yes. Uh, you can prove that uh, there's yeah. matter, but it's, it's not trivial. It's not trivial. So maybe maybe one, uh, today we will not discuss it because it's another technical. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, technical it's again very technical. Maybe, it's, that may, maybe, maybe at some point we will do it harder. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible just to reduce it from the equation. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's important. Okay, uh, so, давайте я повторю еще раз, что ты сказал, что Патрик сказал, потому что я сначала почему начал говорить про то, что в скобках в сравнении с логической рекурсией, потому что я хотел там тоже это изучать и заметить, что помимо этого два никак не помешает тому, что не будет лишних поясов, но действительно можно делать даже проще и вообще не рассматривать то, что в скобках, а сказать, что раз мы верим в то, что из топологической рекурсии, из соотношения топологической рекурсии следует, что мы бежаем симметричны по всем переменам, мы можем доказывать то, что, полю... что полюса в Z0, то есть со знаменателя 
z0 входит только в виде z0 минус по и в таких степенях. А так как здесь, вот здесь z0 никаких нет, то тут и пылесос. И поэтому можно, изучать, можно опять изучать зависимость от z0 только при факторе вот в этом. И тогда опять же посмотреть на то, что мы делали сейчас для нелейного петлевого уравнения. Где эта формула заново? Вот она, да? Вот она. Посмотреть вот на эту формулу а, и убедиться, что действительно а, какая-то зависимость от z0. Вот он действительно есть здесь знаменатель, но когда мы берем вычет, ну я могу повторить, что это пригласил, да, когда мы берем вычет в W, то получается, что действительно знаменатель возникает как раз вы сейчас были в экстремеле, к каким-то критическим точкам, каким-то поитам, то тут как раз возникает то, что нужно. И еще в знаменателе есть еще в знаменателе есть вот эта дельта от омега 0,1. На нее на самом деле тоже нужно посмотреть. Она... Мы ее еще не выписывали, да? So yes, I should add here... Delta omega zero one of. But it again does not depend on the zero. Ah, so yes. Yeah. But uh, at this point it's irrelevant. Ah, yeah. It doesn't. You see that it doesn't depend on on the zero. So it does not change the denominator, including the zero. Okay. So is it clear about? Pose. Okay, so our let me write something. So um, so using the fact that TR therefore omega G and Symmetric. Uh, we obtain that we are interested only in uh, dependence on Z zero. Therefore, uh, we are interested only in uh, delta z zero g i. Mm. Okay, so. We are done with the projection property, and the third step is the quadratic loop equation. Is the quadratic loop equation? So, okay, how we proceed with, with quadratic loop equation? Again, let me remind what we had previous on the previous lecture. We had um, something like this. So. Okay, uh, we had that, so we know the projection property. Uh, this means that we know that omega gn of z0, z2m is equal to, uh, we, had, had we, did we have this p, Notation last time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you wrote it not curly p but uh, wall p. Ah. Okay. Uh, so p p zero. Yes. P zero. 
only by Gn. So this is again the, the projection property in the variable z0. So p0, let me maybe write p0 is equal to uh, um, sum over radius g. p0 of omega gm, yes, z0 z is equal to what sum of uh, I should take residue, yes, mm -hmm. uh, in Z0, yes. No. A residue, uh, some new variable, doubling. Ah, so, okay, W. What's the PI? Uh -huh. G of W Z0. G I of W Z0. And some eyes. Time sign again. Uh, yeah, time sign. Of W. On, yes, only of W. So, yeah, it, it was. So, just a reminder of what, was, what is uh, P0. Uh, okay, and uh, now, and what we had, we had that this is equal to 1 over 4 um, sum this big sum raising to pi uh, delta g delta w. And for this, we used uh, the projection property yeah. and the linear loop equations. But at this point, we already have them. We already mm -hmm. have already proved the linear loop equation and uh, we proved projection property modulo this statement that uh, it is equivalent to the statement that there are no other forms. Uh, times delta. W on the G N, uh, of W, yeah, because of its right hand side. Yes. W Z2 mm -hmm. uh, Next, еще раз, мы вот это то, что синим опять же написано, это было в прошлый раз, и мы действительно при выводе вот это его вот это равенство пользовались линейным уравнением и свойственной проекции, но у нас они, как уже Петя сказал, вот есть по пунктам 1 и 2. Поэтому так мы можем написать. А, да, хорошо, теперь дальше. Значит, дальше у нас есть. Давайте увидим. So, okay. Next, we want to prove quadratic loop equation. Uh, and Again, we want to like cook the quadratic loop equation from the right hand side of this formula because the quadratic loop equation is more or less what, what is written here. Uh, so we have this and and we have and we have with this and what we are going to so we we are we want to so we have ah okay we should write it for the omega g n plus n one plus one but it's easier yeah. here because yeah. well let's let's just change it yeah. to n plus one and here you just need to replace two n and one plus one and it's it will be easier yes it will be just z n uh -huh. Uh, M and and uh, okay and uh, 
so what so let me just instead of omega g n plus one in the, yeah in the topological recursion formula let let me write the right hand side of this stuff yeah so i plug this uh, into uh, the left hand side of the topological recursion relation and what what we we will obtain we obtain something like this so one over ah, okay mm, one over half residue uh, sum of residues okay. sum of residues uh, this delta w g and let's at this point already divide and multiply by delta omega zero yeah uh, omega six. Uh, I, now I just rewrite this and uh, later I will just rewrite the topological recursion relation w omega g and plus one w z n uh, times so uh, sum n w to p i and uh, we multiply divide and multiply by delta w yeah. omega zero one and it's okay to do it inside the residue I mean we just so, divide and multiply by it yeah, yeah yeah it's okay so we multiply omega delta delta omega. delta delta w yeah Delta W uh, omega zero one uh, W and divide. Right, let's divide here. So okay. divide here. Uh, and divide delta W omega zero. You see, nothing, nothing happens. So we, we just yeah. divide it and multiply it by delta W omega yeah. zero one. That's okay, right? And this is equal to this is equal to recall that this was equal to omega g n plus one. Yeah. But so on the other hand, it's equal to the expression for the topological recursion, right? So it's the same residue, it's the same sum. Also, this exactly this guy. One half. Yeah. One half. Exactly this guy. Okay, so do you know how to quote it? No. Only okay. Mm, just have here just the same refactor and the guys here which are omega g minus one and plus two uh, yes plus some prime is it clear how we got this? No. Okay. Any, any questions? Is it clear why this equality holds? Еще раз, вот, yeah. вот это вот это мы применить рассказали, что омега. 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 За нее можно писать пару логических Да, да. Это, вот это вторая строчка, последняя вторая строчка, я просто Второй переписал. Строчка, можно писать переписал вот это. Да. Эти две формы. Ну, вот я просто, что они обе равны, обе я же. просто я переписал. Вот давайте, наверное, вот эту штуку, то, что, то, что у топологических рекурсов есть скоб, скобка, как-нибудь обозначим. Вот как раз e, e, G, N, Ну да, давайте обозначим e, G, N, плюс 1. То есть я вот это. Ну вот, вот это вот. Б. 
Позначим где G N плюс 1. Место на трещин. А, а еще давайте обозначим вот одна вторая эта штука минус E G N за Q солдой. Да, и давайте теперь сейчас, давайте теперь все перенесем в какую-нибудь одну часть. Да, давайте теперь, что вот в правую правая часть. часть. Наоборот, лучше вправо. Вправо, давайте вправо. Давайте все перенесем в правую часть, у нас будет что-то равно нужно. Давайте пока ждем обозначение. Я предлагаю вести обозначение, чтобы не писать опять долго уже все. Ждем обозначение, что e минус 1 вторая дельта дельта равно кусом. Да, давайте хорошо еще одну нотейшн. Значит, что e g n плюс 1 минус 1 вторая дельта w омега g n плюс 1 w z n W равно Q с волной. Uh -huh. N. N плюс 1. N плюс 1. Это основа нотейшн. So we, we have two, two new notations at epsilon or E, curly E, gn plus 1 and Q tilde gn plus 1. And let us rewrite. Just one small comment. Why are we calling this Q tilde? Because uh, this guy, actually, if you recall it from last week, is almost what we have in the quadratic group equation. So we last week we had Q G N, and this Q tilde is very similar to it. It differs by one term, which we also had last week. So we'll. Okay, so now I rewrite this this stuff uh, uh, as so I I put the left hand side to the right. Uh, and uh, we'll write that something equals to zero. Uh, as follows. Um, one half. Some. One half, yeah. Sum is equal to one to n residues p i. Uh, this refactor that uh, g i doubles g z zero. Delta W omega zero one W and here we have just U tilde U tilde G N plus one equals to zero. Yeah, so we now have uh, and yeah, so maybe let me write the difference between so what is quadratic group equation in this uh, in this notation. So, so uh, just a moment, is, is it clear what, what is the last formula and how we got it? So maybe let's first prove that uh, this means that Q tilde is... Uh... Okay, then I mean just to, to, to see the goal. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so what is, again, what is quadratic loop equation? Let me, so now, now we, have, we have this. And uh, now let me remind what is quadratic loop equation, what quadratic loop equation is. Um, uh, with blue, yes. So uh, quadratic loop equation, again, it, what is it? It, uh, it is omega for this, oops, for this, for this n plus one, yes, okay. Uh, so it's omega g minus one n plus two of uh, say z zero sigma z zero uh, z n plus some without prime 
omega g1 uh, m1 oops. Uh, i plus 1 uh, z0 zi times omega g2 sigma oh, sigma i yes. sigma i sigma i uh, z0 z j no, as usual so this is ex exactly <coughs> some prime plus Two ter plus uh, two additional terms when yeah. one of the factors equals uh, omega zero one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? So what is the difference between this sum and this sum prime? You remember in sum prime we had exactly this same sum, but with additional condition that we disallow uh, these guys to be omega zero one. Yes. So this and uh, the second one. Uh, in some prime. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, prime. let's call it QGM. Yeah, let's call it QGM, QGM plus one. Yeah. And it is QGM plus one. Uh, and what was the quadratic equation? What was the statement of the quadratic equation for a number? Yeah, that's every uh, at every critical point, this it, it is it has at least a double zero. Yeah. So and now the goal is from. Well, maybe let's write that it has a double zero. Yeah. It has uh, a double zero at every pi. Well, most of plus has at least double. And the goal now to from from this black equation uh, obtain obtain the well, 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 let's also right. write what is the difference between Q2 yes. and Q. So the, 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 the claim is that Q QGM is equal to Q2 the plus one half SS. Uh, maybe yeah. So QGN plus one is equal to QGN. QGN plus one is equal to QGN plus one tilde plus one half S S omega omega G oh, S uh, double omega G N plus one double N uh, omega mm -hmm. S S S omega zero S W omega zero one W S W omega zero one W. It is so. So to see this, we should remind what is S S and the delta delta we had also. This is just the direct computation. You yeah, have to yeah, do the definition of S and delta. So maybe it's just. Uh, um, do we need to recall the, the definition of S? Uh, S times we, we, we have we had two not S but S times S. Yes. So what's the question? And we did exactly that. Uh, we did exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly, last week. Yeah. exactly that we did last yeah, okay. week. So maybe. So now we only need to uh, one uh, first one remark is that uh, yeah. uh, this guy. This guy is glomorphic. is glomorphic and has a zero <laughs> and, and has a zero uh, at uh, the critical points because so, of the loop equation, right? So we can the linear loop equation. Yeah. So we can plug add this uh, term here. If you if you just uh, uh, put it under this residue, it will not, will not affect anything because uh, the residue will kill it, right? The residue with this prefactor kills this term due to the linear loop equation. This is the same reason which we had last week. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Last week we also said that we have this term and it is killed by residue, by taking the residue. But now we add it manually mm -hmm. here. And this means that we can er erase tilde here. Yeah, so uh, let me maybe not erase, but like. So this also true. This is also true, right? Is it clear? Why can we erase tilde in, the, in this equation, in the black equation, and it's still false? Понятно? Потому что можно еще раз, вот, вот этот, они отличаются, Q и Q тильда отличаются на вот этот член, его можно добавить сюда под вычет, и с использованием линейного петлевого уравнения заметить, что э, всякий вычет будет от него равен нулю во всех этих точках, с учетом этой штуки, mm -hmm. потому что он имеет двойное значение. Слушатели онлайн, вы там, вы живы? Живы. <laughs> Any questions? What is it clear why we have this? And now what remains is to show that if uh, this holds, the black equation holds, then uh, this implies that uh, Q G n plus one is holomorphic at every uh, rotation point and uh, has a double zero there, right? So this is what remains. So now, in order to show this, we uh, need to uh, go back to the formula for delta G. Where was it? Uh, in blue. Yes. Here. So and look at this formula. Uh, what happens when? Uh, uh, let's look at one of those terms. Maybe let's rewrite this formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe let's. Yeah, how to copy? I don't think it's possible. Oops. Okay. Oh. Right, maybe. Duplicate. Duplicate. Oh, oops. And then we need to. Um. And then we lost it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, so it's uh, easier uh, to rewrite. Yeah. Maybe you can zoom out then. Ah, zoom yeah. out, then move, and then. Yeah, yeah, still, it's yeah. probably easier, yeah, yeah. faster to re just rewrite it. Uh, so again, uh, delta W, delta I, W I, I, G I. Delta W, delta I. Uh, G I W Z zero. So what we have? Uh, I have here. So W minus sigma I of W the D Z zero over W minus Z zero and sigma I Yes. And uh, let's look at what happens uh, when uh, Z0 tends. So let's look at one of the terms here. We have the sum, right? And since this sum is 0 at every point, we know that it's 0 at any point in the, uh, in the, on our ring sphere, right? Uh, which means that it should also be 0 at, uh, mm, as a function in the zero, right? Let's look at this guy as a function in the zero. Uh, and uh, also, it should be zero at when the zero is equal to, uh, to one of the pi. So let's send the zero to uh, some pi, and let's look at the respective term in the sum, at the i term of the sum. So we'll look at uh, mm, z zero, Z0 tends to pi, and we look at just the i term in the sum. Maybe take uh, like more. Okay. So Z0 uh, tends to pi, and we look at just the i term. So the i term looks as residue w uh, to pi. Uh, so why only at 
so, so uh, let's, let's just for a moment look at the i's term. So delta w i g i of w z zero over delta w i omega zero one of w times q g n plus one of w so let's look at just the i term. So in, in particular, if, if uh, the whole sum uh, it becomes zero, in particular, it shouldn't have uh, this thing. Uh, it shouldn't have a fall in the zero, right? When uh, the zero tends to be high. So I mean, if if this so for this to be regular, so to, for for this whole sum to be zero, in particular, ah, this guy, the, the the residue itself, yeah, should should be. Uh, it sh it shouldn't have a fall in particular, mm, but uh, I I mean it could be it could cancel with some other fall from other sums. No, but uh, let's look at the dependence on. Um, mm, at the, at uh, the dependence on z zero, the dependence on z zero only can, is contained only here, right? Is contained only here. So where can we have holes in z zero? At any other point, uh, a part of um, uh, when z zero tends to be i, right? So what what uh, becomes of this uh, with, with this guy? So we'll have. Uh, uh, let's look at all the other terms, right? So what what happens at some uh, for some term for some j's term? Right? Maybe let's uh, because we had yeah. So let's uh, the zero tends to pj and we look at this term. Uh, but what happens at some other point with this residue? Once we take the residue at some other point, uh, this mm, uh, the dependence on z zero becomes like that. So it will be p i minus sigma i. Uh, sorry. So the dependence on z zero is comes uh, in, into play in only uh, this denominator, right? So we will have one over uh, pi minus z0 times uh, pi minus z0, right? Times something. So this is how this guy depends on z0. So uh, when for the terms which uh, uh, where i is not equal to j, this cannot produce a fall at the point pj, right? Right? Oh, because it's of this form. It cannot produce a fall at the point pj. Okay? Uh, now let's look at the pj's term, at the, PJ, at the j's term. And uh, then, if you look at uh, the j term, if indeed you will see that uh, uh, it's, it seems to have a double fall there, right? A double fall there. Uh, when z0 tends to pj, when z0 tends to pj. Uh, but the whole expression should be zero, even if the zero tends to be, when you take the zero tends to pj, right? The whole expression. Uh, the other terms cannot cancel this fall because they uh, only can make falls at, at, at the other points. As we see, just. Uh, which means that uh, these. Uh, this term should vanish uh, separately at this when z zero tends to pj, uh, the expression under the residue should uh, should vanish due to the properties of of just this guy. Okay. Uh, and what does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, this means that. Um, We'll, let, let's look at the dependence on W before we take the residue. So maybe am I not 
So that it just means that you should have a double goal at, at pj or the double zero. Yes. So, so, no, but uh, yes, the, 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 that's the point. So because the uh, we uh, <clears throat> look at the expression under the residue. And let's uh, see what happens when if we exchange these two operations, taking the residue and just for this term, and uh, uh, taking this limit, z the zero to pj, right? So what happens if we exchange the order of those two operations? Is clear? So what happens? Uh, what will happen with delta delta g? So you will get. Uh, let me write it below so uh, you will get mm, maybe write just res of clean so uh, yes <laughs> residue w tends to pj uh, limit <coughs> the zero tends to pj of, of this thing is residue w tends to pj and we'll look at what happens here. We still have W minus sigma J of W uh, is at zero. Uh, and here we'll have W minus PJ times sigma J of W minus PJ. Uh, and in the denominator, we get uh, in the denominator coming from delta omega, we get y of w. y of w minus y of sigma j of w um, times dx of w, and everything is multiplied by q uh, uj or uh, qg. Mm -hmm. And plus one of W that then and we need to see that this guy actually vanishes because uh, uh, this limit because otherwise we'll get a fall and we cannot have it. Uh, but how can this happen? Let's look at uh, uh, what is our so I mean this Q. Uh, it uh, it is some polymorphic series, right? So what uh, what are what are the orders of the poles? So we have uh, mm, this guy omega w minus sigma j of w has a simple pole, a simple zero. This is a simple zero at pj, right? Because of sigma. <clears throat> w near j is equal to w. Uh, it's, no, it, 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 it's equal to w. <laughs> and well, they are both equal to pj, right? This is the back transformation which so, uh, <laughs> fixes the point pj. So this is a simple zero. Uh, this is again a simple zero and this as well. Right? And here we have also a simple zero, and dx also had a simple zero. Mm. Uh, dx also had a simple zero at this point, right? Uh, when will this vanish? So we need to require that. Maybe, maybe, could you write that uh, omega about the zeros? Right mm -hmm. down. So I will, I mean, this. Has a simple zero. This as well. Yeah, I mean, this as well. This as well. <laughs> and this as well. So I mean, we have in the numerator one and the denominator one, two, three, four. Okay. Right. And what does this mean? This means that uh, uh, Q itself should have the zero order three. Why three? So the, for the residue we need uh, for the residue we need the, ah, zero for the two yes for the residue we need uh, to have ah, okay. uh, for the residue we need the, the the power minus one part to be right. zero so if, if this if this residue vanishes right 
Uh, this means that uh, um, Q should have but not at least then the uh, yeah but, uh, exactly exactly uh, the, yeah, that Q uh, that Q should have the second uh, the coefficient in front of uh, W minus P J where it should vanish right yeah. from this reason uh, but we also let's look at Q and know the fact that U is where is the yeah here is the Q let's look at Q and notice that it's invariant under uh, under replacing uh, Z0 with sigma I of Z0 is it clear? Because of the symmetry. Because of the symmetry. So for, from this, for this term it's clear, and for this term we just replace the proper factors. So it's uh, evidently it's symmetric under this transformation. That zero, uh, if you transform the zero to sigma i of the zero, then uh, it's, it's symmetric. So which means that uh, and for this residue, we can always assume that W is a local coordinate such that sigma of W is uh, uh, equal to minus W, and the symmetry will mean that this Q does not have odd powers of W, right? So in particular, it has uh, the coefficient in front of w squared in this in its uh, expansion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so okay but I mean, why do we, we already have that QGN plus one has a zero of order exactly two at PJ? Yeah, we, I mean, from this we want to deduce that uh, Q is indeed uh, behaves like we uh, like we said. Yeah. So it, it should have um, a zero of order two. Yeah, but, but it, it has. What is it? What if it is a constant plus uh, the pot? Uh, ah, um, pot. Mm -hmm. So the only problem is uh, in constant term because we don't have uh, uh, the term. Ah. But 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 okay, it is yeah, a constant. So it is over. But but wait, okay. It, it's okay because of we just will not have any residue, and it's okay. So what, what's the problem? No, let's look at the constant part uh, before uh, uh, before replacing this residue limit. If we look at the constant part, then uh, then this guy. Mm, once you divide W minus sigma of W by uh, by the by this delta omega zero one, you get the power exactly minus one, right? Uh, and uh, this means that this will be multiplied by again this pole, which will not be okay for us. Значит, еще раз, произошло следующее, что утверждается, что, значит, во-первых, мы можем, мы смотрим на предел при Z0, ну, стремящемся к 
PJ, мы говорим, что мы можем поменять... Сейчас, почему можем поменять предел и резидию, и вычет? Ну, значит, мы хотим сказать, что... И не, не, не должно получиться особенности в любом случае при этом. Да. Нас интересует этот вопрос. Да, не особенности. Хорошо. Но и из того, что получилось, получилось, что Q, если Q имеет, Q должен иметь 0, хотя бы второго порядка. Если он имеет 0 второго порядка, там получается регулярный вычет какой-то в этой точке. Если он имеет 0 старшего порядка, то там получается просто вычет нулю, правильно? Вроде все в порядке, нет? В общем, мы должны, сделать, мы должны сказать, что у нас этого полюса здесь появиться не должно. Такого. Сейчас, тебе кажется, что это не так? Но он не может появиться, только если мы под интегральное, под, под вычетное выражение само обратиться в ноль. Так, ну, а вам что нормально? Или, или что ты? Ну, вроде да. Так, ну ладно, нам надо все равно перерыв сделать сейчас. Да. Так, ну... So we have a break until... Until... Uh, 14.55. Yeah. Any questions from... Yes, any questions from... Anyone?